Joining me right now is former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Newt, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. So much to talk about with you this morning. First off, give me your, give me your take on where we are in this election and the Trump campaigns uh, pushing forth on, on trying to overturn the results. Do you think this is going to the Supreme Court? Well, sure. I mean, it's guaranteed to go to the Supreme Court. And I would say that the outcome actually is a question of how tough President Trump is prepared to be enforcing changes. Uh, I think there are enough different indications in Georgia, for example, that you could almost certainly flip the election in Georgia, which is very important in setting the stage for getting to an honest election for those two U.S. Senate seats. I think the outrageous illegality of the Nevada legislature uh, virtually guarantees that you have a civil rights suit there uh, because they literally have legalized corruption through the Democratic legislature. I think the incident in Wayne County, Michigan, where the two Republicans voted not to approve and then, frankly, were humiliated, intimidated, threatened, uh, called names, uh, it's exactly the opposite of what an election process ought to be. Uh, and, of course, Philadelphia is probably the most corrupt example we have. So I think the president owes it to the country. Forget not just his re-election. The president owes it to the American people to ensure that we understand how much corruption there has been and, what the, and how the left has rigged the game and how they've tried to basically steal the presidency. And I think if we're allowed to get away with it, we'll try to steal the two seats in Georgia. Well, well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, if we're seeing this kind of, you know, uh, irregularities, fraud, whatever you want to call it, in Georgia, where thousands of ballots are being found, why would we think that the Senate races in Georgia, where you've got runoff races happening in, on January 5th, which will dictate the policy of America, it, it may very well change America entirely. Why would we think that that's going to be a safe and secure and honest election? Well, you have a secretary of state in Georgia who's clearly totally intimidated by Stacey Abrams and her political machine. You have a governor in Georgia who's hiding in the basement, doing nothing. Uh, the state legislature's got to find a way. Uh, it's, it's empowered by the Constitution, not the governor, not the secretary of state, not the court. The Constitution says specifically the state legislatures. And frankly, they should find a way to call themselves back into session with or without the governor's approval. And they should take control of this. It's an absurdity how many different examples we now have in Georgia of corruption. And here's what's going to happen if we don't change it. The Republicans will raise millions of dollars to buy advertising. The Democrats will raise millions of dollars to make sure they rig the election. We focus on the campaign. They focus on Election Day. And they just drown us. Uh, and I think in Georgia, we have more and more evidence. And frankly, if the Secretary of State were doing his job, uh, we would know today just how bad the corruption is. But he has totally taken a dive on behalf of Stacey Abrams and her machine. She's already announced she's going to have 600,000 absentee ballots. And under the agreement the Secretary of State made, he's not allowed to check and verify anything about these ballots. We had 3.5% of the ballots thrown out in 2018. We had 0 0.3 of 1% thrown out this summer. Now, does anyone really believe you have four times as many absentee ballots and the percentage thrown out went down? If those ballots had been the same as 2018, uh, we would, in fact, have 39,000 ballots thrown out that are currently being counted but, I mean overwhelmingly for Biden. Newt, I mean, is anybody doing anything about this? So we know that there's all these thousands of ballots being found in Georgia. We know that there's a Senate runoff race on January 5th. And you're saying that, yeah, they'll, they'll likely cheat. And I mean, if they do and the Democrats win in Georgia, let's just lay out what will happen. And that is the progressive policies will get through the Senate, be approved. That's four point three trillion dollars in tax increases. That's a one hundred trillion dollar Green New Deal that is defunding the police, that is open borders. And then, of course, the approval of, of Joe Biden's cabinet. Uh, I reported uh, that Roger Ferguson is being looked at for Treasury Secretary. He's a moderate. But they're also talking about uh, Susan 
Susan Rice for Secretary of State, potentially Hillary Clinton for Defense Secretary. This is from Cowan and Company uh, that they're telling their clients what Joe Biden is is considering. I mean, I could go on U.N. Ambassador Pete Buttigieg, Karen Bass being being uh, thought about. But the bottom line is these positions have to be approved by the Senate. If you've got Democrats controlling the Senate, all of that goes through, right? Sure. And you get uh, two Democratic senators from D.C., two Democratic senators from Puerto Rico, and you virtually guarantee the Democrats uh, will turn America into California, uh, which I think is their goal. I mean, Pelosi's from San Francisco. Harris is from San Francisco. They've watched California become a one-party machine state, uh, and they would like to turn the same thing in for the whole country. So I think this is I think cleaning up Georgia is the fulcrum of the entire rest of the future of this country. If we can't get to an honest count, and I think if we do get to an honest count, Georgia will actually vote for Trump for president. Uh, if, and I think we'll then easily win the two Senate seats. But as long as that state is corrupted, and as long as the Secretary of State is basically a wholly owned subsidiary of, of uh, Stacey Abrams, and as long as the governor is hiding and not doing his job, uh, and the state legislature is sitting there watching this happen and not acting. I think we're in real trouble, personally. Wow. All right, real, real quick on a stimulus. Is there anything that gets done during this lame duck session? House Speaker Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer pushing to restart the stimulus talks. They want a $3.5 trillion deal. Uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is taking over the negotiations from Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, and he said yesterday that he would like a new bill to reflect a smaller number than the $2.4 trillion that the Democrats are seeking. Newt, uh, the president said go big. You think something happens here? No, look, I, I think we're in a different environment right now. Pelosi's number one job and Schumer's number one job is paying off the blue states that have unbelievably big deficits. You just mentioned, I think, New York's maybe 50-some billion dollars. They're desperate for taxpayer money. Uh, I think that the president's primary goal is to help small business and to reopen schools. So they have totally different goals. And I think that uh, it's going to be very hard, from my standpoint, it's very hard to see how they're going to find a way to, to either shrink the Democrats' aspirations or to convince the Republicans to bail out the blue states, which have been unbelievably willing to throw money away for the last 20 years, have pension funds that are hopeless, and would like the rest of us yeah. to pay for it. Well, there's a lot at stake, Newt, and love talking with you about it. Thanks so much. We'll keep watching sure. and uh, talk Thank with you. you soon. Newt Gingrich joining us there. Thanks. My